Dun, 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 boom, 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 boom. Do you want a Wildstar t-shirt? Watch this video, find out how this can be yours. Howdy folks, my name is Richie, a.k.a. Bog Otter, and a few weeks ago I attended PAX East, and I got some hands-on time with Wildstar. And I just wanted to do a video that gave a more in-depth, uh, just kind of thought process about what I saw uh, during my first time playing the game. And Wildstar, if anybody doesn't know, is an MMO that is upcoming, and, and it is being developed by Carbine Studios, and it's kind of, uh, you know, a science fiction slash fantasy it's kind of like you know it takes place in space hybrid type game and it's got a whole bunch of things that are going to be included in uh end game and stuff and i'm gonna i'm gonna start talking about wildstar more on my channel and then probably have a series of videos that you know just kind of analyzes the different features but for this particular you know video right here i just want to go over my hands-on impressions um this is the first time i got to play it and what I did was I had three separate play sessions over the weekend, and each one was pretty short. They're only like 15 to 20 minutes a piece. And it's kind of hard to really, you know, judge an MMO or, or really kind of know what it's all about from that kind of a short play session. And, uh, but, you know, so take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, each play session I played a different character. And I got to experience a little bit of like, uh, I think we were like level six. Level five or level six when we started, so that's kind of the beginning of the game, but not not really the the first experiences in game. So let me just talk about character creation at first. Um, they only had the three races from uh, the Dominion side. All right, the Exiles were not playable in this demo, so I got to uh, look at the Cassians, uh, the Draken, and the uh, Makari, and the character creator was pretty stellar. I, I would say I was I was a little surprised I, I would say like we we I've we've hit a kind of a, a threshold of really cool character creators recently. I love the character creator in Guild Wars 2. It's very in-depth and you got a lot of options in there. But at the same time you can't really make anything too overly goofy, which which is a problem with some games like Ion who had a lot of customization, but man, you could make some really weird characters when that game first launched at least. Um, now, I've, I've actually seen the character creator in the Elder Scrolls Online, and that is phenomenal as well. And I would say Wildstar is right up with them. It, you get a lot of customization options, but because, like, some of the races, like the Makari are, you know, they're basically robots, right? So some of the character customization there was really insane. Like, they would have sliders for, like, your brow or, you know, your forehead or whatever, but it would, it would change all of these, like, gadgetry and, like, the visor on your helm and, you know, and you could just really, really change them quite a bit. And the Draken are kind of bestial, right? They're, um, they've got a lot of, you know, just different, you know, they're humanoid, but they, they kind of look like, they're like demon creatures and they, you can play around with the horns a whole bunch and, you know, the eyes get all kind of weird and their jaws jut out and you just got a, you know, a lot of coloration options with these races and e even the human, you know, the Cassians, um, you, you could really do a lot to just, you know, customize your character. So I was very impressed with it and I'll have to say, you know, the, the music in this game is phenomenal. Just on the character creation screen alone, they have this, you know, kind of like, I don't know how much is looping, but they, it's, uh, it really brings a really cool vibe to to the game, and and I know that you know from from attending the panel, the Wildstar panel at PAX East, that the music uh, is just this very eclectic group of things. Some zones will have kind of like you know a uh, mix of like techno electronic and like dubstep stuff, but then you'll also have some you know more uh, symphonic. Uh, uh, sections as well that are, you know, kind of a little bit remis reminiscent of like a Firefall type thing. They got that Western kind of feel, but also f mixes of modern. So anyway, the music, just from what I've heard so far, is just very, very compelling. So I got to try the Makari as a warrior first. Uh, I jumped into that, and what I was immediately, um, I immediately noticed that as soon as I zoned into the world, the there was a lot of exclamation points over a lot of NPCs. And that was a little bit interesting. Um, uh, you know, I'm used to guilt playing a lot of Guild Wars 2, and so this was kind of like a throwback to my days in playing WoW or, you know, even Star Wars The Old Republic a bit. Um, and it was interesting because at the panel, one of the, the people, uh, one of the people in the audience asked the developers, hey, 
the first thing I noticed was a ton of exclamation points. You know, why are we doing this? Why do we, you know, that seems like a step back, you know, traditional questing and, and stuff like that. And I thought the developers answered this very well. They, they basically said, hey, look, you know, we, uh, people are used to, exclamation points over characters for a traditional quest system. And Wildstar does have some traditional questing in it. Um, so why are we going to reinvent the wheel um, and put a different symbol over someone's head or just try to do something in order to mask the way we're, we're doing that? We are having traditional questing. Now, in addition to that, while you're moving around the world, things are going to happen to you. You know, you're going to get radio calls out of nowhere when you enter a certain area that actually kind of, you know, voice, there's going to be voiceover, you get a radio call, and it kind of tells you about things that are going on in the area that you can do. So they deliver quests in that way. But there's also um, paths, which I'm not going to go too deeply into. I was an explorer path, which basically meant that, um, you know, I, I get all these kind of side missions and things to do and content delivered to me just for exploring the world. So I had this one pit where I just kind of walked over to this pit and I said, hey, do you want to investigate? And I was investigating it, and then the the uh, the floor gave way, and I got dropped into an explorer instance. And, and this was a cave kind of complex with, you know, creatures in it that I had to kind of explore fully. And uh, part of that, there was different challenges inside of there. Like one of them was um, I killed, like, this kind of, like, space cat creature, and it said, hey, uh, within the next, like, th three or four minutes, please kill, like, 15 more of these things and see if you can do that within the time limit. So not only was I exploring this cave complex, but I actually had this timed little mini mission inside of it. So their, their response to this was, yes, there's traditional questing. Yes, there's exclamation points over your head. But there's other ways that we're going to deliver content to you as well. That's just one system that people are familiar with to get into the game, to have some familiarity with, and then move, move around. And I like that a lot because Guild Wars 2 goes through great lengths to try to say, hey, we're not doing traditional questing, right? We're going to do this dynamic event system where things just happen to you as you explore the world. But they saw that people were so kind of thrown off by that during you know their early testing that they added the renowned heart system in place, which was kind of like traditional questing. So the renowned hearts are meant to kind of lead you around the map and get you to go to different places and then Though you know you're kind of nearby where dynamic events will happen, uh, will, will occur. So the, the the renowned hearts was getting you to go through, just like traditional questing is getting you to go through the world in Wildstar. The problem with Guild Wars 2's approach was people were confused by the renowned hearts. Right? It wasn't like traditional questing exactly, and uh, people kind of thought that that was the content. Right? They thought the hearts were the main content, and really was the the event. So so they kind of uh, got it, it was a little bit muddy at launch. Uh, what exactly uh, was going on at Guild Wars 2 with that with that system? When Wildstar just said, "You know what? We're not gonna we're not gonna confuse the issue. There's traditional questing, and then you'll see there's other stuff." So, uh, long story short, um, I, I thought that uh, that was a good answer to that question, but it was also something that I immediately noticed as well. Now, the combat uh, in in the game is really fluid. There's you move around. It feels really good. It's kind of got that actiony feel that a lot of MMOs, you know, are, are kind of gravitating towards these days. I love the telegraphing system. If you haven't watched Wildstar's video about telegraphing, they they basically monsters have a v variety of different attacks, and they will affect certain areas. So, like a cleave attack, if a monster has a cleave, you'll see like a split second before the monster does the cleave, a section of the ground light up in an arc in front of them that knows that you know that there's an attack about to happen. Same thing with like a conal fire breath or something. A big big kind of symbol will appear on the floor and it tells you, hey, you're going to have to get out of the way real quick or something bad's going to happen to you. And it gets more and more complex. But I, I like that system a lot. Now, some people don't like telegraphing. That, that That's that obvious because they think it dumbs down the game somewhat. But I've seen some of the, the videos and I've actually played it. It gets, the patterns get com more and more complex and your timing has to be more and more on the money to get out of the way of these things. And if you have multiple creatures with, you know, a variety of different, you know, uh, you know, telegraphing patterns, it gets quite complicated to be able to stand in the right place at the right time. So I do like the telegraphing. I think it's much better than, uh, you know, fighting a monster and not being able to tell what's hurting you or where the big damage is coming from. Or if it's more subtle, if like there's just slight animations that kind of tell you what's going on. I, you know, it, I, I like to be able to, 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 to know what I'm doing and, and rely it on my reflexes to get out of the way rather than me being able to pick up some, you know, minuscule thing, uh, some sort of minuscule tell 
or something like that. So I like the combat. It was very fluid. I don't recall all of the exact abilities. I played a, a warrior on the Makari. I played a Draken Stalker, and I played a Cassian Spell Slinger. And so they were all they were all very different. The Stalker is kind of like more of a rogue class. The Spell Slinger is dual pistols and more ranged. Um, but each one was unique and fun. I liked the ability. I only had a few abilities with each one, but there was a lot of movement, a lot of jumping in and out of combat. There was dodging. Um, and like I said, it felt very fluid. I, I like what I did so far. I, I fought some one big creature. I can't remember the name of it, but um, it was like a level six or seven, and it was gigantic compared to everything else. And it took me a long time to beat it, but I did a lot of circle strafing, a lot of dodging and getting in the way, but I was actually able to solo it and take it down. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, the, the other thing I want to kind of talk about is the art style. The art style is very bright and very cartoony and, uh, you know, a little bit reminiscent of WoW, but it's not exactly WoW. Um, it, I like it a lot. It's, it's, it, 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 it pops with a lot of color. It's got a ton of personality to it. It's not going to be for everybody. Uh, certainly, I know that that aesthetic does not appeal to everyone. And what's really interesting is that the two MMOs that I'm really kind of following right now are Wildstar and The Elder Scrolls Online. And you could not get a more different aesthetic from two games because Elder Scrolls, you know, if you played any of the single player games, you know, they go for a much more realistic style. And not much is kind of over the top. You know, they, they want everything to, you know, kind of fit the, the real realistic feel. And it's a beautiful game. The graphics are stunning in Elder Scrolls Online. And the, the graphics are stunning in Wildstar, but they're completely different. And uh, that's really cool that, that they have that. Um, I like the fact that it's um, they're not afraid to, to, to you know, it's, it's fun to actually be able to let loose a little bit. And some of the things that, you know, they do visually and with the voiceover work and with just the characters, that like it just oozes personality and a sense of humor. But the, this art style also is very, very smart. For, you know, anybody who's played World of Warcraft knows that they can, you can, with that kind of similar cartoony style, you can make the game not only playable on a lot of different systems, and and you know you can kind of appeal to people that don't necessarily have high end, you know. Uh, system specs, but it also has a kind of a timeless quality to it. You know, World of Warcraft is over eight years old, and yet it still looks really good, especially for an eight-year-old game, because of the that art style, right? Um, so it, it it is kind of uh, an interesting thing that if you go for something that's r hyper realistic, right? Five years from now, the technology will be just be so vastly superior to what it was, you know, uh, you know, five years ago that when you actually compare something that's going for a realistic look to something five years from now that's going for a realistic look, you can really tell the difference. Um, the cartoony style or, or, or something that's a little bit more stylized in, an, in, an, uh, in its approach has a, has a little bit more of a um, longevity to it. So anyway, that that's kind of you know wraps things up. Like I said, I can't really uh, go too in depth. I didn't get to play with a lot of the systems. I didn't get to you know obviously player housing. I didn't do any PvP. I didn't do any dungeons or anything like that. I just basically I have to run around the questing area and get a kind of a feel for the game. I, I think I'm going to just talk about Wildstar uh, you know uh, on my channel a bit more. And I have like a Tyria talk uh, show where I talk about Guild Wars 2, and I have uh, a brand new Elder Scrolls Online show called Tamriel Talk, and I'm kind of thinking, you know, I want to do one for Wildstar as well, as well. but I thought, I thought maybe you guys would like to try to name it for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run a little mini contest here. I was actually able to pick up a little bit of swag while I was in PAX East, and this is a uh, Wildstar Makari t-shirt, all right? It is... Kind of wild star on the back, the logo there, and then it's got a picture of the Makari, the robot, robotic race from the Dominion side. This is a large T-shirt, by the way. It's never been worn, because um, that'd just be creepy. Uh, and what I'd like you to do is leave me a comment below and suggest a name for a, a show that I'm going to be doing on my channel that just basically kind of talks about Wildstar, its features, analyzes it. If you've watched my Syria Talk videos, then you kind of know what the deal is. Um, a couple things that I'll, I'll give you a hint on. Um, one, it can follow the Tyria Talk, Tamria Talk model, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Um, and it also shouldn't be the name of something else that's already out there. So check other fan sites, websites, 
uh, columns of articles and stuff like that. I, we can't repeat a name, right? It's got to be something original. And thirdly, don't assign like a time frame to it. Don't be like, uh, you know, the Wild Star Weekly or something like that because I don't know if I'm going to put a video out every day or every week or whatever, what the frequency of that is. So those are the kind of conditions. Um, so leave a comment below. Make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, you leave a comment on this video. So that would be uh, super awesome. Now, I'm not going to restrict this, like, to U.S. or, you know, I'm not going to leave out international. But I will say that depending on who wins and where you live, if the shipping exceeds, you know, something of the realm of $10 or something like that, uh, I may ask you to help me with the shipping costs there. But hopefully we won't have any problems with that. So go ahead, uh, leave me a comment. What is the name of the show you'd like to see? And you can win some delicious PAX East swag and there it is once again um, I'm going to close this contest on Wednesday that is next Wednesday April 10th um, at the end of the day my time that'll close and then I'll, I'll co try to contact the, the winner um, via YouTube so make sure you're, ch you're checking your, your messages on YouTube and stuff like that sometime uh, late next week so that's going to wrap things up. Please like and share and favorite this video and leave any questions or comments in the comments field below and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be notified when future videos are released. All right, guys, I'll take care, everybody, and thanks so much for watching.